Welcome to the Experimental Aircraft Channel podcast and video podcast series, where we talk with our guests about experimental, light sport, and ultralight aviation. We are just getting started with this, so if the audio isn't 100% just yet, bear with us. Perfection is coming. Let's jump right into the interview. Okay, everybody. So today I have a very special guest uh, on this brand new Zoom software show here on YouTube, and that is man, the myth, the legend, Corey Robin. Corey, thank you very much for uh, taking a few minutes out of your day to talk with me, uh, even if it's virtually because we can't reach out and touch one another right now in today's day and age. But thanks for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's good to see you, Brian. It's good to see you. Um, so first off, just to kind of clarify where in the world we are, I am sitting at the moment in the panhandle of Florida, a little town of Alford, which is near Tallahassee. And where are you located? I'm in uh, basically a suburb of Salt Lake City, Utah. Okay, okay. I just drove through there a couple weeks ago. Uh, oh, what quite a big idea. place. Yeah, I followed the whole adventure, saw your visit with Steve Henry and moving kit foxes around. Or was it a Highlander? It was, it was a kit fox, yeah. Move, moving all kinds of stuff around, Fords and trailers, and it was a yeah, good trip. Awesome. Yeah. It was a good trip. So um, one of the things I wanted to uh, – I mean, obviously, you, you are a YouTuber as well. You post a lot of aviation. You're a big supporter of aviation, and thank you for that, by the way. Um, but I'd like to kind of dive a little bit deeper into you uh, and maybe some history like – how did you get started in aviation? Um, like, who introduced it to you? What was the first airplane you flew in? You know, that kind of stuff. You know, my aviation story starts uh, when I was in fourth grade. Um, I didn't, I, I don't really have any family or anybody who were in aviation. So um, when I was in fourth grade, we had to do a book report. Not necessarily a book report. We had to write an essay on World War II. And so I, you know, have this Encyclopedia Britannica collection at home as a little kid. And I started flipping through World War II and I saw a picture of a P-51 Mustang. And I kind of gravitated towards that. And I said, well, what does that have to do with war? This is a cool airplane. And I read the caption, P-51 Mustang. So I grabbed the, the P section, couldn't find anything. I found it under North America, who's the manufacturer of the P-51. And it told the whole story about how the War Department needed a, a longer range escort fighter because the B-17s were getting hammered in the European theater. And so they needed longer range, they needed more speed to compete with the Focke-Wulf FW-190. And so in a, basically a, right around a three month time period, just a little over three months from the time the War Department placed the order to the time that they were flying the prototype, it was about three months. And I just was like, wow, three months. That's a that's my summer break. That is so fast. So and so I, you're gonna build a, a Mustang over your summer break? No, that that is how fast they did it. <laughs> so it was just amazing. So I wrote a little, um, you know, as a kid, pretty much just read the Encyclopedia Britannica and parrot it out. And so it was like a really couple of paragraphs is all I wrote. But ever since uh, that time where I learned about the P-51 Mustang. I was just a huge fan of Warbirds and especially the P-51. And I just fell in love with aviation in general and anything to do with airplanes. I started doodling airplanes. I started making model airplanes. When I was, um, I don't know, I think I was 10 or 11 years old, I made my first radio controlled airplanes and I was really flying a real airplane and I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. Yeah. So, you know, and then I kind of stumbled on, uh, you could get your pilot's license at 17 years old, but you could solo at 16. And so as soon as I was able, I think it was 15 and a half, I went and got a job at a grocery store, bagging groceries at a, uh, it's called Reams, it's the name of the grocery store. And I bagged a lot of groceries. And um, I went to the local flight school, talked to an instructor, and I said, when can you start getting lessons? And he said, well, you can get lessons at any age. You just can't solo till you're 16. And I'm like, I can solo? <laughs> start now, because I was still 15. Right. So every single little paycheck I got, and believe me, back then, this is, this is when a paycheck was like $150. Right. And that, was, remember, that was minimum wage. Minimum wage was $4.25 or something. I don't... It was a long time ago. 
three dollars and eighty-five cents. Oh, <laughs> you worked hard for those bag and groceries there. Heck yeah, man. So you I know, you know, actually, that. we kind of have a similar background with that because uh, when I was a little bit older, not ten, I think maybe fourteen or something, I started out with remote control too, and the first one I built went out to the field and had a one of the guys out there that experienced, you know, help me take it up. And then he handed me off to somebody else. Well, that second guy crashed my airplane. So the next time I'm like, I'm not going to let anybody crash my airplane. So then I, I crashed it. If I'm going to, if somebody's going to do it, it's going to be it, me. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But I, I bag groceries that we have Publix over here. I don't think you have Publix out West, but uh, yeah, when I was 15, before I even had a license, I was bagging groceries trying to save money for uh, aviation. So cool happen to everybody. If you are finding value in this video, hit the like button and it's really important that you subscribe as it helps me get sponsors like Airworks, Aero Adventure, Wingbug, Grip Block Ties, Edge Performance, and new this month, Kit Plane Parts. And right now, Grip Block Ties has a promo for USA customers to get free shipping. Just use the code experimental. Find all of these links in the description below. Let's jump back in. I'm sure of it. But, um, you know, I just kind of looked up to all these people flying in the backcountry in these cubs, and they made it look so easy. And then when I started flying a cub myself, I'm like, oh, it is easy. So I researched the Legend Cub, which is a fantastic kid. I researched the Carbon Cub. I researched the Savage Cub, which is a beautiful cub. And then I looked at, you know, the traditional certified super cubs. And I definitely decided I have to go experimental because I want to do a lot of my own maintenance. I'm really good from a technical perspective. I think I've, you know, with, with the help of an A&P, I've got a pretty good head on my shoulders. And I love having an extra pair of eyes. And so whenever I'm doing anything critical, I have my, my buddy who's an A&P help me out. But I still like to do a lot of my own stuff. So I had to do experimental, but I'm not a builder. Okay. But I wanted to be a part of that cool kids family and have an experimental aircraft um so well we, we welcome you with with open arms Corey. thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, i wish i would have built my airplane it is a home built but it was built by a fantastic gentleman in uh, new york state um, and i purchased it from him right as he was completing the project so it was just perfect timing so it was basically you know i get all the benefits of an experimental airplane without the build you know i think building it is a fantastic journey. My big issue is, um, you know, four years ago when I was purchasing it, we had just had a child, a newborn, and there's just no way I was going to be able to carve out the time to build an airplane and run my business and be present as a father. So I just made the call. And sure. Just, you know, and I didn't want to spend a year in the in the hangar building an airplane anyway, which. If you can build an airplane in a year, you're moving, you're cooking. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, I've got a friend, uh, Jason Sneed, who I think he still holds the fast build record for a carbon cub. I'm not sure, but I think he built it in 83 days, start to finish. Wow. So from taking delivery of a kit to flying it. Yeah, days. that's that's pretty incredible. Magic. Oh, cool. So um, what – Again, you share a lot of information out there on your YouTube channel and have been around for so many years. But I'm kind of curious a little bit, a little bit deeper behind the scenes of Corey Robin. Like, who is Corey Robin? Like, behind the brand. I'm not sure there's, there's another guy out there that does this series called Behind the Brand, interviews actors and business people. But I kind of am curious of the behind the brand and aviation people. So, aside from aviation, here's a question: um, What other things are you maybe passionate about or enjoy doing? that you're not at the airport or hanging out in the hangar or making videos on aviation? You know, one of the, one of the, one of my biggest things that I enjoy the most that's not necessarily related to aviation. I've forced it to be related to aviation, but um, <laughs> you can make any topic about aviation at some point, right? You can force it in there. Well, it's why I'm a backcountry pilot in the first place is I love being outside. I love mother nature. I love, just being out with nature. In fact, I had a buddy of mine and he and I used to go out and do like survival weekends where we'd go out with minimum supplies. We wouldn't bring a tent, we wouldn't bring a sleeping bag and we'd go camping for the weekend and we'd make wiki ups and we'd make lean twos and we'd figure out how to start fires. And I'm just huge into outdoors. With that caveat though, people would assume that I'm like a hunter or something. I've never hunted. And so I, I love being uh, on, on that, on that note, not to interrupt, 
my wife and I were just talking about like the worst case scenario of our current situation. If it got to be Hunger Games, we need to go out and buy some bunnies just to have some rabbit meat. And I'm like, you know what? I don't think I could bring myself to chopping up a stuffy, you know, a, a, a stuffed animal, a bunny. So <laughs> I don't know if it's in me or not, but anyway, just yes, you continue. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I worked on a, on a ranch when I was younger. Um, uh, you know, I did, I was a professional cowboy and worked on a ranch and, you know, I actually okay. slaughtered a pig one time. I helped. I didn't do all that. You saw what? I slaughtered a pig. Oh, okay. Where you hang it up by its feet and you bleed it out and then you, you know, you, you butcher it. Um, it was, it, you know, it's, it's a humbling experience to know where things come from. So I highly recommend it. Um, you know, I, I, I grew up in a, a single parent home with just a mother and you know she's she wasn't very outdoorsy and and I so I ne never had the um, the father figure or anything to, to take me out hunting or do any manly stuff so any any manliness I've got in me I've had to just uh, pick it up off YouTube or <laughs> so you, re you really crave the outdoors because even yeah, yeah I, I, I tell my wife like she spends a lot of times obviously with the kids and like you really need to get them outside because she's more of the introvert, not completely, and I'm more of the extrovert, not completely either, kind of a mix of both. It's like, yeah, my girls are definitely extroverted. Like they, as soon as I'm heading towards the door, my middle child is putting her shoes on. Outside, outside, go to town, you know, and she's, she's two and a half years old. So, yeah, you're probably just absolutely craving that, right? And you're getting it now, which is amazing. Yeah, yeah I, have a, I have a very strong desire of, um, a lot of people call it a wanderlust. I love to explore and experience new things. So whether it be in a, uh, you know, a rural environment or I'm out with nature or I can be in a city and I can be exploring a city, like I love to experience uh, new things. Um, I love culture. Uh, so I do love to travel the world. Luckily, I work in the airline industry with my job, my day job, and I do have an opportunity to travel. I've been on six continents the only one that i haven't been on is antarctica but there's no airlines over there to right work with so yeah i'd love to go out to australia because they they not you know they're they're a big continent but as far as the people in aviation they're quite small compared to us but aviation is is pretty big there and a lot of people have been sharing with me what's going on in australia and i would love to take a trip down there not just a week but like spend a month there and visit people and see what's going on in uh, the down under side of things brian let's go let's do it let's do that how about my plane should be done at the end of this year. We'll ship both of our planes down there, and we'll just fly around all Australia visiting people. You know, I could be persuaded to do something. Like that. <laughs> hey, what do you guys think? Do you think Brian and I should go to Australia? Comment down below. <laughs> right. Let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> Set us up. <laughs> that would be an epic trip. You know, I actually, speaking of Australia, I bought, let me show you this. This is something cool that some of your viewers might like, and I don't know this girl, but she actually made a video. I think she's Australian. She has an Australian accent, but she made this video called Fly About. Oh, cool. And it's a, it's a, it's a DVD. I wish I could find it digitally. I just can't find it digitally, but um, she's basically around. She circumnavigated all of Australia in a group of pilots, and they dealt with weather and all kinds of fun things. It's a really fun little video. Um, it's called Fly About. Check it okay, out. I'll have to check it out. I don't know her. I'm not giving her a plug. Nothing. It's just a cool video, and we're all in quarantine, and we need to consume quality stuff. And this is actually really good. So, good. gotcha. Shout out to her. Gotcha. All right. So another question for you. <laughs> and, and, and you know, we're not women, so we can share this information. How old are you, by the way? I'm uh, 45 years old. Okay, so we're close. I'm 42. And uh, what about family? I, we've talked before a little bit. You, you, I've got three kids, and you've got a few kids yourself. I've got four kids. Uh, okay. Four boys and a girl. Um, they age uh, out uh, from four to eleven, um, and so yeah, I've got my hands full. When I yeah. do have, I'm I'm uh, no longer married, which kind of sucks. I wouldn't wish that kind of thing on anybody. But uh, so I I have my kids part time. Okay. Well, to everybody out in the world, send hugs to Corey right now. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, so. With gloves on. Really with gloves on. And a mask. Gloves on. Virtual hugs are okay. You don't yeah, need okay. Gloves on that. okay. You know, this last, this last uh, 
it's it's been a long time coming, several years really. But uh, yeah, this last year, I've gone through the the whole, or I'm still going through the divorce separation process, which wouldn't wish it upon anybody. I'm sure there's a lot of people going through it. So, and I'm not. I'm actually really in a great place right now. I'm pretty pretty happy about where I'm going in life and what's going on. I think I'm I think I'm doing pretty good. Good, good. Well, I'm here anytime you want to <laughs> hop online and talk. Um, absolutely, absolutely, no problem with that. Uh, a couple other questions for you. Um, so, what else? What else I was going to ask you? Oh, well, just. Considering what we're all going through right now, and you've been in the aviation world for a long time and very much in it because that's your your career, where do you see where do you see aviation going in the next year or in a second to that? Because I don't want to go anything too negative. Obviously, this is a good news network here in aviation, but in addition to that or after that, what can we do right now to make sure we keep aviation alive? Other than like we're making videos right now, try to keep people engaged, that aviation is still here and still an interesting thing. Um, what kind of things do you think we could do to keep people engaged to, to keep aviation alive? One, one thing that's intrinsic to the aviation community is our ingenuity. You know, whether you're, you know, one of the Wright brothers turning bicycles into airplanes or you're Mike Patey building a uh, scrappy in a hangar with all the resources in the world, Innovation and being able to adapt and improvise and overcome obstacles is really part of our DNA as aviators, as builders, as pilots. And so that's one thing that I've, I've actually already started to see it. You see these awesome things like virtual fly-ins now where you got a whole group of people on the Zoom platform doing the, the hangar flying that we used to do going to the airport where we'd be like, I'm going to go to the airport, I'm going to go flying, but we'd end up spending all day out there because we pull up the lawn chairs and sit around a barbecue and, and, and socialize. Yeah, and I'm starting true. to see people do that in a social fashion. And let's say this continues to drag on and like the staple event, Oshkosh gets canceled. What, 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 what do Don't even speak that into the air, Corey. But, but, you know, we're on the Experimental Aircraft Channel, a lot of EAA members. Yeah. But let's say the EAA does something magical and they say, hey, we're going to do a virtual Oshkosh this year. We're going to invite a few air show performers to perform at Oshkosh. We're not going right. to have the house there, but we're going to live stream it on, like, the Experimental Aircraft Channel and the Corey <laughs> Robin Channel and the Air Show 360 Channel. We're going to give this feed to all these creators, and we're going to have a virtual air show, and we're just going to put it out as long I, I mean, I'm not saying that AA is going to do something like that, but it's that type of ingenuity, that type of spirit, and bringing that feeling, that spirit of aviation together is what I really would love to see throughout this if it continues. Now, now let's say we're able to nip this thing in the bud and get back to business. I think aviation is going to be one of the first things to pick right up and recover very quickly, just because that's just who we are as a people. You look at uh, what it takes, you know, the Kit Fox that you're building, you look at John at Kit Fox and his background and his history and the richness and what he brings to the table as a human being, that human element that marries it to aviation, that's magic. And that's what makes us rebound so quickly and, you know, and, and captivates us all, that wonder, that feeling, that, that spirit of aviation. It's part of our DNA as a culture. And yeah. so, you know, no matter what we're going through, we all have that in us. And, and that's one of the most beautiful things. One of the things I love about aviation the most is the camaraderie and, and the people. Yeah, the, the community is definitely the, the biggest thing with that. And my wife, when I introduced to, it to her, uh, will be seven years we married, went to a flying in Georgia, and she was just amazed that, like, nearly everybody that we talked to, she's like, they're just really nice people, genuinely nice people. I'm like, 99% of us are, <laughs> you know, for the most part. It's a great community. People are, I mean, you can strike up a conversation with anybody and probably you last an hour minimum you know it just it's a it's a very passionate thing that we all share but yeah that's some good points there Corey um you know and trying times kind of pivot into some creative ways to keep keep things going and and maybe we will uh we will see that happen um and the other thing I'm thinking that if we're all in isolation for this long we're gonna we have this such desire to be in community 
to be in fellowship with people that we're going to want to create all kinds of happenings to go out to, you know, so even though this might have moved or been canceled, something else is going to pop up in its place because we want to be around people, right? At least half of, half of the people that are introverts or extroverts. <laughs> well, you know, and, and I think that there's a certain amount of intelligence that goes along with it. You know, I don't, unless there's some sort of a, a, a cure or um, inoculation, I'm not a medical professional, but unless we come up with some sort of medical solution for this, we have to handle it with social isolation. So there's gonna be a lot of people that are not going to want to go to big gatherings because of the virus. You know, even if we kind of tone down and taper off the, the big time social isolation that we're in now, um, and, and we've all seen the posts in all the different forms of everybody's anxiety, but then you see all everybody supporting people. Um, but we need to do things the right way. We need to come together and we need to support each other. And, and, and honestly, there's no shortage of having fun in aviation. I think that takes care of itself. I mean, right. I have fun. You know, one of the things I really enjoyed recently, one of your projects you just did is, is covering the, the stole competition in Texas, the Lone Star Stole. I, yeah. That was a video series, and I think you still are putting out content of different airplanes and different things. That was magic to me because I really wanted to be there. Yeah. Here's Brian bringing it to me. So thank you. I really appreciated the, the effort that you put into that. And I know, uh, you know, it, it allowed me to attend the event, even though I wasn't actually able to be there physically. So I appreciate that. Well, thank you. I appreciate your support very much so. Yeah, that was a good time. I was able to stop off at another uh, place on the way home, which was Legend Aircraft, which I just did a, a video on recently as well. There's one more coming up on a Builder Assist uh, this weekend. But, yeah, um, I appreciate that. It's It's been a good time. I, I, I like to get out there and, and meet the people. I met so many people at that show. Again, it's all about networking and the community. And, you know, that one conversation may spark or start a relationship that may last a lifetime. I mean, this is a very – it seem, aviation seems so big and spread out, but in reality, when you're in it for a little while, you realize how small it is because so many people know – everybody knows everybody, really, that's in, in the game, if you will, right? So, And it's, it's – you know, it's almost overwhelming how um, – I don't know if overwhelming is the right word for it. It's very fulfilling – to attend an event where there's so many people that are looking out for the best interests of a movement. And I think that we've all kind of seen some of the decline in aviation in the last decade, but now you've got a very resounding group of people that are supporting it. And it's not that we don't necessarily want to rely on the organizations like the AOPAs, the EAAs, the NBAAs to, to support the, the, uh, the aviation community itself. Sure. You're starting to see advocates come out of everywhere. These, you know, this one guy who cares, this one lady who cares, and they're just such amazing people that are doing these amazing things in their garages with experimental airplanes, or they're, they're we're racing bush planes now, we're doing stole competitions, we're doing cross-country uh, events where you group up with, uh, you know, the, the Cessna's to Oshkosh events, one of the really, one of the most cool things, the Moonies to Oshkosh event. I do a slow and load Oshkosh with a bunch of bush planes and it's the camaraderie and, it, and it's becoming, everybody's getting involved in supporting aviation, which is, which is really magical. I, I love watching that kind of stuff, seeing everybody come together for, uh, to support our awesome passion and livelihood for most of us. Yeah, we're really getting back into the grassroots. It's like it's, it's I don't want to say it's cyclic, but how aviation started out was a lot more of just in the homes and garages and smaller, uh, you know, airport shows or whatnot. And we're really kind of getting back into the grassroots, which is great. And that's, again, what I'm trying to <clears throat> promote with this channel is the very, very uh, genesis of where that starts. And that is in your garage, whether it's uh, from a set of plans and you want to scratch build or there's so many different options available for us today to build aircraft and get in that community like whether you want to build or just fly like your, your opportunity with your experimental aircraft and the ghost um, there's just a whole like wherever you want to start you want to start the timeline here or here or anything in between it's available to you yeah absolutely and that that is really where a lot of the magic happens it happens with the people 
You know, when, you, when it really comes down to it, most of these airplanes, now we're getting into technology where some of these airplanes can fly by themselves. But most yeah. of these airplanes would just be a something sitting in a hangar, not doing anything. But it's the people who make it special. And that's, that's why the fly-ins, we've got to get back to that as quickly as we can. But in the meantime, these virtual events, you know, get on Twitter, get on Facebook, and get, on, get in on these, uh, you know, virtual fly-ins and meet some new people, make some new friends. And, and we still have an opportunity to connect and stay positive. And uh, for the most part, you know, if you still have access to an airplane, you can still go flying. I think some of us can still do that, hopefully. Right, right. Depending on which state you are and which governor you have or something like that, yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Well, Corey, thank you very much for uh, spending about 30, 40 minutes with me today um, and, and talking about aviation, a little bit about yourself. I, I really appreciate your time. Time is uh, another hot commodity these days with having a business, having a family, and just... Uh, uh, staying healthy. So I appreciate it. Yeah, you too. I appreciate everything you're doing and we'll, uh, we'll keep doing the fighting the good fight, brother. Okay. All right. Thanks, Corey. And, uh, everybody watching, uh, remember to subscribe to Corey's YouTube channel and this channel for more entertaining, educational, fun stuff in aviation. Thanks for watching. Thank you for joining us here on the Experimental Aircraft channel for the video podcast and or podcast. These episodes will be available on YouTube as well as all the popular podcast platforms. Thanks for watching or listening. We'll catch you next time.